evening and welcome to the news of Ashuruq TV. Today's headlines are Government and Darfur continued negotiation on security arrangements. Sudan tasked to prepare a new reconciliatory document draft on Renaissance Dam. Sudanese Civil Aviation Authority extends closure of airports until June the 28th. The government and Darfur track movements delegations continued negotiation on security arrangements on Sunday through a video conference in Rotana Hotel in Khartoum and Crown Hotel in Juba in the presence of the Southern Mediation. The session tackled a number of issues concerning the security arrangements to reach an agreement on all the provision of the file in the time set by the mediation. The leading figure of the Sudanese Revolutionary Front and senior negotiator of Darfur track, Ahmed Tugud, has affirmed the solution of many of the outstanding issues, indicating that the signing of a peace agreement by the government and the Revolutionary Front has become imminent. In a statement to Suna, Tugud said that the negotiating parties have finalized discussion of most issues, explaining that the negotiation is currently focused on the security arrangements file and measures of disarmament, demobilization and reintegration, which is the penultimate stage prior to discussion of the reform and promotion of the military institution. He considered the measures and arrangements that have been taken so far are sound and reasonable and would lead to achieving a peace agreement shortly. Chairman of the Four Lawyers Committee, Mohammed Abdullah Duma, said the surrender of the war criminal, Ali Kosheb, to the ICC is a great victory to the victims. Duma, in a press statement to Suna Sunday, called on the government to hand over the other five accused to the ICC. There is an open case file against the five defendants in the ICC and no case against them in Sudan. Therefore, it's better to hand them over to the ICC, Duma confirmed. The tripartite video conference meeting between Sudan, Ethiopia and Egypt on the Renaissance Dam tasked Sudan to prepare a new draft of a reconciliatory document based on the remarks raised by the three countries during the meeting. The three parties shall return to negotiate on next Monday afternoon to discuss the draft and assess the negotiation process and consequently the next step. According to the press release, the discussions were centered on the technical aspects of filling and operation of the Renaissance Dam under condition of ordinary rainy season, a dry season, the long successive dry seasons, and also on the permanent operational methods. The press release pointed out that these discussions are aimed to reach an integrated agreement covering the quantity of water that will be drained from the Renaissance Dam Lake during all scenarios, adding that the views of the three countries were in accord on most of the technical questions, except on some details. The Prime Minister, Dr. Abdullah Hamdok, has praised the efforts made by the state governors in managing work in their states under the pending challenges, indicating that the new salary structure is a promise that the transitional government has fulfilled for the state workers in the state, especially in the health and education sectors. During his meeting with the governors of the states and the ministers of the economic development sector, Dr. Hamdok said that the Sudan Partners Conference, scheduled in the German capital Berlin at the end of this June, is concerned with contributing to tackling economic challenges, strengthening Sudan relation with the international community and building partnerships that meet the aspirations of the Sudanese people. He affirmed the necessity of optimizing the high productivity of wheat this year and benefiting from it by addressing the issues of mills and providing bread, stressing the need for good preparation for the summer agricultural season and tightening the coordination between the relevant authorities to provide all production inputs. The Sudanese Civil Aviation Authority has announced the extension of the closure of Sudanese airports to domestic and international passengers' flights until June the 28th. The Civil Aviation Authority maintained the exceptions previously announced, especially international humanitarian aid aircraft and others, from what it had mentioned in its previous public actions. <music> Lieutenant General Abdul Rahim Hamdan Dagalu, second commander of the Rapid Support Forces, called on that four holdout rebel leaders to hand over the killers of two civilians recently murdered inside Kelma camp. The Galu called on the camp residents to reject violence and to hand over the culprits to the legal authorities, warning against attempts by the international intelligence and infiltrators in Darfur to ignite discord in the region. 
He vowed that under the revolution government, any criminal or mercenary in the camps or any location would be arrested and held accountable through justice. He further promised to protect the Kalma camp and solve the case with wisdom and reason. The Deputy Chairman of the Sovereign Council, Lieutenant General Mohammed Hamdan Dagalou, met on Sunday at his office. The SC member, the Deputy Chairman of the Higher Committee for Health Emergency, Professor Sadiq Taur. Professor Taur said in press statements that the meeting reviewed a number of general issues, of which the COVID-19, the health situations in the country and the work of the Health Committee, especially the ongoing preparations for the return of the citizens stand abroad. The meeting also discussed the contribution of the rapid support forces in the strengthening the committee's efforts aimed at fighting coronavirus pandemic in the different states with regard to spraying, sterilization and awareness campaigns besides establishment of isolation centers and doctors' housing. Cabinet Affairs Minister Omar Maniz met on Sunday at his office the steering committee of the Sudanese Red Crescent Society headed by Al-Fadil Omar. The meeting discussed the SRC assignments presented in the preparations for its new executive committee, the revision of the accounts, assets, property and membership at the chairmanship states, localities and units level. Manis expressed support to the SRCS, stressing the necessity for restoration of confidence in the society at local and international levels. And now we remind you with the headlines. Government and Darfur movements continued negotiation on security arrangements. Sudan tasked to prepare new reconciliatory document draft and renaissance stamp. Sudanese Civil Aviation Authority extends closure of airports until June the 28th. Well, that was the end of the news for today. Thank you for following and see you tomorrow.